Schmedich, where you been, bud? On the shelf for over a year, we have the return of the Dr. Uro Schmedich taking on Semi the Jedi, Matthew Semmelsberg. And for Medich, one lone loss in his pro career. It was in the UFC. It was to a guy who was in the top 15 at lightweight, Jalen Turner. And in that one, struggled a little bit once things get into close quarters and down to the mat. He got submitted in that matchup, but he came back like a phoenix rising his last time out. He gets outstruck in the first round by Omar Morales. Two of the three judges had that first four Morales. And then in the second round, my man's was thumping poor old one Omar Morales. He dropped him multiple times in that one. He gets the finish and then he's on the shelf for a very long time. And Medic was matched up in a fight a little bit later on last year, but he posted a video to his Instagram. Seems like he broke his hand. He talked about hand da bone damage, a fracture, and then ligament damage. He was getting PRP shots and he's coming back up a weight class to 170 pounds take on Semmelsberger, which shouldn't be a surprise because for Medic, middleweight debut in Alaska, then welterweight fights, on to contender series, it's lightweight and beyond. I like the move personally, yeah, do you? Yeah, I, I do because for Medic, even if you just watch his last fight against Omar Morales, they're two lightweights and Morales has kind of dabbled at 145. Medich looks way bigger he's than Morales huge, yeah. in that one. So for Medich, he gets that advantage in this one. He's got the speed. He's got the power. He's got the kicks. He's a way more diverse striker than Matthew Semmelsberger. But when you look at this, we've touched on it in every single Semmel Semmelsberger fight. I mean, strong safety at Marist College. 200 plus pounds. And at 170 pounds, we've only really seen him struggle. The Chaos Williams fight. And then, of course, his last time out where power apparently doesn't beat control when he took on Jeremiah Wells because he couldn't defend Jeremiah Wells' takedowns. Wells went, what, 6 of 10 on attempts. But Semmelsberger dropped him in the second, dropped him in the third. The fight before that dropped Jake Matthews every single round. So that's five knockdowns in his last two fights. And overall, just for Semmelsberger, the knockdown ratio, 9 to nothing. So he's been dropping guys consistently, and the only parts where he struggled is the little bit of pitter-patter volume against Chaos Williams, and then the grappling against a guy like Jeremiah Wells. And I know I liken Semmelsberger to another fighter kind of coming into the UFC, struggling with the grappling, but he's a really good striker, and if he offensively grapples, he's great. He's got a little bit of that Jack Della in him. The thing, I think Jack Dell is quite a bit better than Matthew Semmelsberger. No but the way. difference is, the thing about Semmelsberger that I really like is, he knows what he's good at and he knows what he isn't good at. And I think that takes you a long way in the welterweight division. You bring up his football background, the guy is athletic AF, and you can just watch any of his fights to know that. He really does have that upper echelon physical strength and some of that fast twitch that you do look for. But the thing about Semmelsberger was, I thought his offensive wrestling was going to be a bigger part of his game when he initially came into the UFC. Not that he doesn't go for offensive takedowns, but I really thought that was going to be at the forefront of his game. Box his way in, get close to his opponent, and then use some of those offensive wrestling. Where, for Semmelsberger, we have seen him kind of wait on the outside and try to find his big power shots. And against a guy like Medich, who is the strangest fighter. There's a scene in The Karate Kid, the one with uh, Will Smith's son, I think his name's Jaden, where... Uh, Mr. Miyagi, showed up Jackie Chan, has a boxing glove on the end of a broomstick, and he's like putting it through a sheet, and uh, Gene Smith's on the other side trying to move out of the way. I imagine fighting Uros Medic is like trying to fight a broomstick with a bunch of boxing gloves on it, because he is so dynamic, he is so odd to pin down, and at 170, I'm going to be really curious to see if it's going to take him a couple fights to kind of gain that physical strength of moving up in weight, because something I was thinking about a lot this week in terms of uh, Poirier when he fought Max Holloway, remember when Max Holloway fought at 155 when he fought Dustin Poirier for that interim title? Yes, physically he looked like he was a 155-er, but normally it takes I guys two or three fights to kind of fit into the division. I'll be curious to see if Medich is going to need sort of two or three fights to gain that physicality to fit in with the division. Having the layoff with the hand injury and, that's a good point. and getting over a year, I think Medich is going to fit just fine because again, he has all that experience at 170, but when you watch Medich on the regional scene, again, we touched on this before, it's no surprise. You watch Alaska FC fights, it's the box of chocolates analogy. It's WLF War. Some fighters are Jared Cannonier, and some fighters are just awful poor victor rodriguez Gina Mazzani. uh yeah so alaska fc a little weird i mean yeah even had terrence mitchell the other weekend that had spent some time there so if you look at it for medich i went back and watched some of those alaska fc fights the fight that he had uh what was it right before he fought in contender series he fought mikey gonzalez but with alaska he fought alonzo leaseholm jr and in that one grappling exchange grappling exchange grappling exchange and to defend takedowns what uros medich does 
Well, it's either I'm going to go for a front choke or I'm just going to punch you as many times as I can to try and deter you from getting those takedowns. So for Medic, he is a tricky sidewinder from Southpaw. He will strike to all three levels. The other thing that you love about Medic is he can strike just as well on the back foot as he can offensively moving forward. And that's a big key against a guy like Semmelsberger. You see Semmelsberger just march guys down and then he's able to have a lot of success when he's in close. You saw that against Matthews. It was a right cross, it was a first knockdown, and the next two knockdowns after that, right Right hook, right hook. So I'll be interested to see how Semmelsberger makes out in this one just due to the fact that A, it's a southpaw in this one against Medic who opens up with a lot of kicks and B, how's Medic going to make out because normally at lightweight he's a bigger, taller guy. If there's a pullback and you hang out for a little bit more, that's where you get caught by a guy like Semmelsberger. I think if the fight's like taking place at that position though, Medic is going to have enough success. I think he is fast enough in that. Yes, you got to worry about the pullback, but still, he is so much faster with his hand speed in this matchup that unless he's getting his back up against the cage to where then Semmelsberger can really unload on him, I do think Medic is going to have a lot of success in the open cage in a lot of these engagements. And that's why I bring up the wrestling of Semmelsberger. If there's ever a time to at least threaten your wrestling to help open up your own striking game, this is the fight to do it. Because wow. if you can get Medic moving backwards, you're right. Yes, he can fight moving backwards, but it at least puts the threat of the takedown in his own mind. And he's not a bad grappler, like you said. He will go for a lot of chokes and whatnot, but he's not going to be the stronger guy than a Semmelsberger. And if Matthew is able to get on top of him, I think that would be a position where he can have a lot of success. Because I think on the feet, this can be a really difficult fight to predict just because of the speed of Medic. You can see him land four, five, six strikes, but if Semmelsberger is able to get on the inside, use some of those hooks. We know he's the more powerful guy that he is able to land, and then I think Semmelsberger is going to land and try to go for takedowns off of some of those strikes. I don't think he's going to waste a lot of energy just trying to chase around Uros Medic around the cage. Semmelsberger did just that against a former Alaskan guy in Carlton Minus, and that was the big thing. Blending in the wrestling with the striking, he beat up on Carlton Minus, and if you want to see a guy beat up a guy in a cage where the referee just lets it happen... When Uros Medic fought Elon Cruz, why didn't Mark Smith end that one? Elon Cruz had a ref round. DC and Joe Rogan were pleading with Smith to end that fight, and it did not happen. You look at the matchup, Matt. Semmelsberger is favored to get the win. We have a look over on Topology for those fan votes because, honestly, I don't know where they're going to be at. I'm going to say over under 67.5% Semmelsberger because he's been the more active fighter and at 170. I think it'll be close to 50 Look at that, and it is over. So 924 total votes, 75% Semmelsberger, 52% by decision, 38% by knockout. For the 25% that have Medic, it's 35% by decision, 52% by knockout. So Matt, Medic out of a big time gym, training at a Kings MMA, Semmelsberger out of crazy 88 Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with coach John Del Bruges. If you're looking at this one, who's the pick? I have a really hard time with this matchup so because, again, last weekend we saw against Tom Aspinall and Marcin Deborah, what did I say? Speed kills at the heavyweight division especially. Tom Aspinall was so much faster than Marcin Tabora for the short amount of time that Marcin fight was still bopping and can't stop. Yeah, he was. That was terrible. I don't know why they fed poor Marcin to another guy in his hometown. My point is, though, speed really is one of those X factors that is difficult to make up for whether or not you have the technique or not. And that's why I bring up the speed of Uros Medic a lot. I'm still going to go with Semmelsberger because I do think he's going to be able to blend in that striking with the wrestling. But if he was just chasing Uros Medic around the cage, not able to cut him off, I think that's probably how Medic is going to win the fight. That's the thing that scares me going back and watching the tape because you reference the fight against Jake Matthews and it's awesome and it's three knockdowns it's one per round Jake Matthews all sometimes right looks flat though you watch Semmelsberger what he does is he hurts him with the pressure and then he gets him hurt and he either wrestles or he backs off and then lets Matthews back into the fight so it was a little bit strange that way I, too, am going to go with Semmelsberger, but honestly, watching the tape, my mind went with Medic. So and I think I we laid out a few like, good avenues for <laughs> Medic to win, too. This is one of those fights where I think just stylistically, it's going to make for a very fun matchup. Because if Medic is going to have success, we're going to see him try to, every now and then, plant his feet, land a power shot, really use some of that dynamic movement he can bring into the cage. And if Semmelsberger is following him, which isn't great, we're not going to want to see that. do it. He's probably going to get hit by some big shots, but hopefully he will be able to close the distance at some point. It's a hard fight to predict, and people might tell you that we're silly for saying that but you're wrong let us know please you have down in the comments section this is a saturday fight on question mark kicks if there ever were one can't wait to see these two face off on friday i was gonna say saturday but on friday as well as on saturday both of us going with semi the jedi to get the win some big time fights on this card the next one cj vergaris taking on venetia salvador and if you want to see flyweight finishers Friggin' go at it. You're gonna wanna check that one out. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get into 